heard somebody say, if you're already ready, you don't have to spend time getting ready. So I do pray that we all are ready for his return. It is an honor and privilege to stand before you today. I'm humbled that my sister thought me worthy to speak at Lamar's memorial. Um, when I was thinking about what I would say, she called me on Monday and I told her, I said, whatever you need me to do. And as soon as we hung up, my nerves started because I said, um, I think my mom said it to her too. I said, I'm a preacher, I'm not a preacher. I said, I can speak, but I'm, I'm not a preacher. And immediately the Holy Spirit arrested me. And he said that you're not a preacher by title. You are a preacher by nature. So I'm going to share with you what God shared with me, and then I'm going to take my seat. The scripture reading is coming today from Mark 5, 25 through 34. A woman who had an issue, a woman, I'm sorry, who had suffered a condition of hemorrhaging for 12 years, a long succession of physicians had treated her and treated her badly, taking all her money and leaving her worse off than before. She had heard about Jesus. She slipped in from behind and touched his robe. She was thinking to herself, if I can put a finger on his robe, I can get well. The moment she did it, the flow of blood dried up. She could feel the change and knew her plague was over and done with. At the same moment, Jesus felt energy discharging from him. He turned around to the crowd and asked, Who touched my robe? His disciples said, What are you talking about? With this crowd pushing and posting you, you're asking who touched me? Dozens have touched you. But he went on asking, looking around to see who had done it. The woman, knowing what had happened, knowing she was the one, stepped up in fear and trembling, knelt before him, and gave him the whole story. Jesus said to her, Daughter, you took a risk of faith, and now you're healed and whole. Live well, live blessed. Be healed of your plague. That's my prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you right now for this moment. God, I ask right now that you increase as I decrease. God, I ask that you would only allow me to speak what these your people need to hear. And God, I pray right now that someone will leave here better than when they came. So God, I ask right now that you let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. I'm not going to be up here long, but I just want you to do, I know we've got social distancing going on, but I just want you to, at least everybody has a neighbor I believe. And I just want you to look at your neighbor real quick and ask your neighbor, what is your issue? What is your issue? So when, when my cousin Chris was up here and the young lady in the back, when they were talking, I was thinking to myself, oh, I don't, I don't even have to get up now. They already said what I was going to get up and say. But I'm going to go ahead and, and share what I have here. So in this passage of scripture in Mark, uh, we see that Jesus had been traveling from town to town and from village to village, spreading the message of God's kingdom. When Jesus returned to his hometown of Galilee, he had barely even gotten out of the boat. 
when people were before him with various infirmities, illness, and disease. But let me pause for just a moment because I understand that there are, as the young lady said, some people in here who know things concerning the kingdom of God. But I would be remiss if I didn't discern that not everyone in here is quote unquote churched. Amen. Jesus told his disciples that some people are going to need a story to understand. Amen. So for those of you who are churched, I implore you to be patient with me while I share the story with those who may not have heard it. And I promise you, I won't be before you long. As Jesus traveled, there were people other than his disciples that began to follow him. And the crowd surrounded him, surrounding him began to increase. As he traveled, there was a man that approached him whose name was Jairus. Jairus' 12-year-old daughter was lying at home at the point of death. Jairus was asking that Jesus come to his house to see about his daughter. Now this was Jairus' only child, so I can only imagine how he felt at that moment. And I'm sure that every parent in here knows how it is when there's an issue with your child and if there's anything going on. I'm sure if you're like me, you'll fight a bear with one hand tied behind your back with your left leg in a potato sack for your child. As Jesus was making his way to Jairus' house to heal his dying daughter, this woman came along and she interrupted what Jesus was doing because she had a need. And she had a need, not now, but she had a need right now. Now, how many of you know that when something that you really need, you don't care who else is around that needs help, you don't care what their issue is, you don't care what they need, your only concern is what you need. And it's okay to be a little selfish sometimes. Look at your neighbor and say, desperate times call for desperate measures. Now, the woman who we affectionately call the woman with the issue of blood had been dealing with an issue of constant flow of blood for 12 years. Some commentaries of the Bible state that medically, there's no formal diagnosis for what this woman was dealing with. Others say it's an issue of hemorrhaging. I don't agree or agree with either, but one thing I do understand is that this woman had an issue and she needed help. This condition that she had been plagued, that had been plaguing her body for 12 years. So let's break it down. That's 4,380 days, 105,120 hours, 6,307,200 minutes. To suffer means to experience or be subjected to something bad or unpleasant. Now, every one of us have been faced with a situation that was unpleasant for us. When you've been subjected to something in your life that doesn't feel good, all you're really thinking about is, when is the change going to come? So let me just remind you of the infamous words of Otis Red. I'm sure this woman at some point was saying, it's been a long, long time coming, but I know change going to come. When we're going through difficult situations, all we want to do is get better. Now this may not apply to you, but there are some situations that I've gone through in my life where I wasn't thinking about God, and I definitely wasn't thinking about prayer. I'm saying, I'm not saying that I was right, but I'm also saying that I just want to be real because God knows everything about me anyway. Now I grew up in the church, and I don't remember 10 Sundays that I wasn't in church. So I always heard scriptures like to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. And just want to share a story with you. In January of 2018, I was in Charleston, South Carolina, helping my company that I was working with train another office. And I got a call from my cousin telling me that my dad had passed away. And when I got that news, Growing up in church, church kid, all my life. Everything that I learned in the church, all those times at the altar praying, 
all those times studying the word of God went right out the window. My response wasn't to be absent from the body, it's to be present from the Lord. My response is a lot of our response when we got the news about Lamar. Why, Lord? I sometimes, sometimes we go through and the church is not what comes to our mouths and the Lord is not what comes to our minds. It's hard to go through, but when we're dealing with an issue, guess what? You have to keep on going. You can't stop where you're going. You can't stop where you are. You have to keep going. And you definitely can't stop if you're going to come out of it. We have to be real with ourselves and allow ourselves to experience emotion, whatever we're going through. I shared this with Grace outside. She said that I might have to cry. And I told her, you do whatever you have to do to get through it. Because in the end, it's going to be better, and you're going to be better for it. Amen. 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 I once heard someone say, and I want to share it with you, you've probably already heard it. There are three situations in life. You're either in a storm, going through a storm, or coming out of a storm. And if you're not experiencing one of these situations, just be patient because you will. And if anyone tells you different, trust me, they're a liar and the truth can't be found anywhere in them. Mm -hmm. Going back to this woman, the woman who dealt with the issue of blood must have been played not only in her body, but in her mind as well. I can only imagine her thought process. I'm sure she was wondering what she had done or failed to do to come to this place in her life. But how many of you know that sometimes bad things happen to good people? Now, y'all may not be like me. I'm just going to say, I know y'all not like me. So let me just talk about myself for a minute. When something, happen, when something bad happens to me and it just happens out of the blue, I need answers. I grew up being taught not to question God. But if I'm being honest, and there have been a lot of times in my life where I've gone through, and I'm like, hey, God, what are we doing here? Because this is not what I had in mind at all. From now on, I'm going to be my own best friend. But what Beyonce forgot to tell us is what do we do when we're in a place alone and our own body begins to turn on? There's no way that this woman could have imagined what she was going to be dealing with. But her issue was so apparent that everyone that ever came in her presence knew what her issue was. Y'all know how we are when we're dealing with something, but nobody knows but us and God. We try to pretend that we're okay. Nothing's going on. There's absolutely nothing that this woman could have done to prepare herself for the life that she had to live every day. And sadly, there's nothing that she could have done to change it. 12 years is a long time. And some of us can't even deal with the little issue that we're facing for 12 days straight without whining and complaining and ready to throw in the towel. Look at your neighbor again and say, what's your issue? I can only imagine the rumors that were going around the town. Hey, man, bro. Because you know, some of us, we can be pretty messy. Hey, now, bro. the Bible says that this woman was ceremonially unclean. And that was according to the Jewish law. And she was not supposed to be around anyone. And anything that she touched became unclean as well. So technically, she had no business even trying to go and touch Jesus. There had to be days when she felt alone. Because how many of you know that sometimes we're, when we're going through, the people that we thought would be in our corner are in the opposite corner, looking at us sideways. Mm -hmm. People standing around gossiping and whispering. I can just hear them now. Did you hear about her? I wonder what she did. I knew God was going to get her eventually. Ask somebody. 
is gossiping your issue. She went from doctor to doctor. <coughs> And after spending all the money that she had, she was not better. In fact, the Bible says that she got worse. Now, I don't know about you, but if I take time to get up, dress up, and use the little bit of money that I have left to pay for an Uber to go to the doctor, I'm expecting to leave healed, or at least better, but definitely not worse. I can imagine when Lamar was diagnosed with cancer. I'm sure he wondered what he'd done to deserve this. And if he was anything like me, he immediately thought of at least three people who better deserve the news that he received. And I know some of y'all right now have three people in mind that should have gotten the news that you got. There were days that I'm sure he felt like giving up and just throwing in the towel saying, what's the use? But he soon realized that he still had some fight in him and he still had some living to do. And I'm sure, I know personally, growing up on the west side of Charlotte, that he definitely had some fight left in him. And he couldn't give up so easily though, because I know the stock that he comes from and I know that giving up was not an option. And even on June 18th, let me let you in on the secret. He didn't give up. His body gave out. And even though the pain and the agony that he was experiencing, that was encouraging to us, to those around him, to keep going. God was using him to teach all of us without even knowing, to persevere, to be resilient, and to remain determined. I know it was hard some days for him to even get out of the bed and face life head on, knowing that someone had placed a death sentence over your head. If you didn't learn anything from Lamar in the last 44 years that God entrusted him to this earth, he taught us more in the last days of his life. Ask somebody again, because I didn't hear them answer you, what is your issue? I didn't hear you. Ask somebody, what is your issue? All right, now I need participation. I'm almost done. Well, I'm glad you asked your neighbor because all of us have at least one issue. But let me help all of us out. As long as you're not dead, God is not done. As long as you're not dead, God is not done. God still has work for every one of us in here to do. Just like the woman with the issue of blood, God wasn't done with her. This woman had to play the hand that was dealt to her day in and day out. And the scripture doesn't tell us that she had anyone there to encourage her or to let her know that she can make it. She didn't have anyone to tell her to keep trusting God. She didn't have anyone to tell her that weeping may endure for the night, but joy is coming in the morning. She was all alone dealing with this issue. And I'm thinking of how her energy level must have been at an all-time low with a constant flow of blood. My oldest son grew up with nosebleeds, and I remember every time he would have a nosebleed, after that nosebleed, he would be drained and you would find him somewhere asleep. So just with that small nosebleed, just think about blood flowing from your body every day, all day, for 12 long years. Drained of your energy and drained of your money, trying to get your ends to meet, or at least like me, trying to get them to stretch enough where they can at least see each other. And then to add insult to injury, nothing has changed. In fact, something has changed. Now you're worse off than you were before. And then standing at the end of her rope, standing all alone, I can imagine her saying, I'm standing here and I don't know what to do. Because now not only am I broke, 
but I realize that I'm also broken. Can you be honest with yourself for a minute and say that there have been times when you've been standing at a crossroad in life and you didn't know which way to turn? I know in my life there were times when I didn't even know which way was up. There have been times when I spent every dime that I had and there was nothing in my pockets but lint and air. I had to get to work and didn't know even how my sons were going to eat dinner. But guess what? God made a way. This woman received her healing. And even though it was clear that she had an issue, she had to first acknowledge that there was an issue. We can't be healed from something that we keep hiding. Now, I've never had to go through NA or AA, but I've heard that the first step in healing is realizing and admitting that there is a problem. This woman had spent all that she had. She had lost time with family and friends. She had lost all trust in doctors, and I'm sure that she started to feel that she would never be healed. But one day, she heard that Jesus was passing by. And I can see her now just gathering the little bit of strength that she has left and saying to herself, I've tried everything else. Why not try Jesus? I don't have anything to lose now. I'm broke and I'm still dealing with the same issue. I can just imagine her now getting her coat, and maybe it was cold, getting her coat and her hat, and going to the crowd. And you know how it is when it's a crowd, if you're at the mall or if you're wherever you are, and there's a crowd and you're trying to get to something. Well, I encourage you, like the woman with the issue of love, to get to Jesus no matter the cost. I can imagine this woman going and trying to get to Jesus. And there was, the Bible says that there was a crowd there. And this woman was walking. Can you imagine her weak and walking and trying to get to Jesus? Trying to get to Jesus through this big crowd. Everybody in the crowd. Crystal, come here for a minute. Everybody in the crowd. Mark, come in. Mark, come in for a minute. Everybody in the crowd. Come in, face. Everybody turns back. Everybody in the crowd. This woman turns towards them. Everybody in the crowd. And this woman's trying to get to Jesus. Now, no matter how I try to get through, I don't want y'all to let me get through. This woman's trying to get to Jesus. And it seems like every time she took one step forward, they pressed her five steps back. But she was still determined that she was going to get to Jesus. Tell somebody desperate times call for desperate measures. When you want something, yes. you're not going to let anybody or anything stand in your way from what you want. Now, this woman tried to press through the crowd and she yes. was trying to get in any way she could. And these people weren't letting her in because you can imagine that she wasn't the only person there that had need. But like I told you before, she had a need not now, but right now. Right now. Right now. She needed, yes. she needed something from Jesus. And see, Jesus was in the crowd and he was working miracles. And she was trying to get in any way she could get in. And they weren't letting her in. They weren't letting her in. She was trying to get around and they wouldn't let her get around. And I can just imagine them knocking this woman down to her knees. And now, I don't know if you know like I know, but knocking her to her knees put her right in the right position to get what she needed from Jesus. Because when I'm on my yeah, knees, yeah. I am praying to God. And I'm going to get what I need from God. Now, I can imagine this woman, and you can think about it. Okay, Crystal, y'all can sit down there. You can, think, you can think about the woman trying to get to Jesus through the crowd. Trying to get to him. So they knocked her to her knees and she started crawling. But guess what? She was getting to Jesus no matter the cost. Amen. She was going to get what she needed. I can imagine her knees bloody because yes. she's crawling to Jesus. People people stepping on her hands and her hands her hands bleeding because she's trying to get to Jesus. Get to Jesus. 
Whatever your issue is today, I encourage you to get to Jesus. Get to Jesus. Get to Jesus. If you can't walk, crawl. If you can't crawl, scoop. If you can't scoop, hop. If you can't hop, whatever you got to do, if you got to drag your body, if you got to limp, I encourage you today to get to Jesus no matter the cost.